Hello everyone, the good tonight here, and today we're going to be discussing one of my favorite guns of all time. Now, it's no surprise that I really like sub guns, particularly growing up playing Police Quest 5 and stuff. MP5s are really cool, particularly if you want to get to the smallest MP5 possible, the Kurs MP5K. It's like this long, and you can even get the PDW version with the folding stock now. Fantastic gun, and that ties into the fact why I'm wearing this backpack like a boot. <laughs> so, here we have one of my smaller backpacks, Warrior Salt Systems little map pack, but there's clearly something inside now. Sub guns are pretty fantastic because of their concealability. Now, you can normally carry a handgun if you need rapid deployment instantly in a similar situation, but if you happen to be like a room or two over, and there's suddenly a situation where guns need to be called, you can pull up, peel off your little backpack here, undo some zippers, reach in, and it's showtime. Just like that, so I'm actually borrowing a juice box, one point sling I sold in for this. So we've got our MP5K here. This way it's nothing that has a folding stock, which is nice. So we're going to throw this on real quick, give her one point sling. And yeah, so fantastic little gun we've got here. And for various reasons, one, it's small. The stock fits fantastic, you got this little forward grip, and there's a good deal of uh, historical significance, we're going to say, to uh, this gun overall that I'm going to be covering for you. So, MP5, okay, the curves, we got our small little mini mag here, which is very tiny. It's been defined as adorable. This is a Tokyo Madari, by the way. And there's some interesting features to it. Built-in forward front grip, folding stock, and this little thing. So there's two things that came from the MP5K that are very, very important to note. First off, this is probably going to be the first gun that most people have seen this little forward grip thing on. Now, this is unique because with the uh, M4 SOP mod and stuff where they came out with vertical grips, if you can see my uh, SR16 chilling down there, it's got a vertical grip on it too that I've had for my time enlisted. Now, in the MP5K, there's outside the magwell, there's really nowhere to grip the gun, and grabbing the magwell is generally frowned upon, so unless you want to like run your fingers through there and get like a tiny grip on it, which is possible, you can do that, but generally most people are going to hold it from here, and you got your little finger stop and everything. So, from this came the mentality of when the SOP mod came out, also with nowhere to grip the gun, they put the vertical grip on it. People saw Spec Ops doing it, and they're like, hey, we should put this on every gun, and people held it really awkwardly, and it ruins the pre pre prepossession of the uh, where your well, basically where your hand is in position to your body that you can tell with your eyes closed, signals to the brain, stuff like that. It messes with that, but with this it wasn't a big issue. So that's the first thing. This was a really cool addition for submachine guns to make it very easy to control the kick and everything. And before the stock of the uh, PDW version, if you're running just the normal base plate, you can. Uh, Adjust your little one-point sling, because if you're wearing this under a jacket or a trench coat or whatever, and if something pops off, what you have here is basically a, I guess you'd call it a reverse. This is basically how one-points came to be popular, is one-points with submachine guns like this, without a stock, assuming we didn't have the stock here, it would actually be the push away from the body that gives the uh, back end its stability, so you can have that single point forward moving around. So you can go raise this up and da 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 da. The little bit of kick's not gonna be a big problem. It gives you a uh, second point of uh, contact that lets you basically aim out the weapon more effectively. So whereas you'd pull a stock in to get the uh, stability, this one you push out to get the stability. So those are the two key th features for the MP5K that were really important. But of course we've got a stock on this one, so you just pull up on this, flip that on out, and you got your little stock. So. Fantastic little gun, historically and airsoft-wise, and its small nature makes it absolutely fantastic for CQB. I'm now going to remove the sling, because it's, well, juice boxes, for one, and we don't really need it. So we got a very tiny gun. MP5s, it's very easy to carry a bunch of mags for. They're very easy to conceal and carry. This one being smaller, if you need to, you can collapse it, and you have a very lightweight pistol grip sort of gun with full auto. I've already done a few modifications to the barrel here. I'll probably put a different end on here at some point. But, yeah, lots of unique things here. Very small package. Airsoft-wise, this shoots at about 0.6 joules or around 6 joules generally. So, you have a 
weaker weapon, so it's not going to hit people as hard, which I'm sure they appreciate. No one wants to get hit close to a jewel every time, particularly particular in full auto, excuse me. So, you've got the small gun that you can keep around corners and do all sorts of cool CQB stuff with that you're not going to be able to accomplish with, well, definitely not the shotgun, and less so with an M4. M4s are shorter, they're more useful in CQB than the longer M16 versions, but this one, very tiny, very small. And as you can tell, if we have our imaginary wall, it's very easy to peek over, get a very small target, and also swap sides. Again, very small. So we have our wall, like what, right here. There's not too much of me to shoot. And it's very easy to swap shoulders and everything, which makes it fantastic for CQB. And if you're in very, very close quarters, one of the big issues you have with M4s and stuff is if someone's on the other side, you gotta swap shoulders and lean over. With this, if you're shooting someone off here on the right side and someone comes up towards your right shoulder, you can still pop, 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 get some work going, do some finagling, and still get in those close quarter shots. Much like you'd be able to do with a handgun, but instead of using your M4 and having to reach down and handgun someone, now you've got a very simple, you can even just rotate over this way, one hand, two hands, whatever you need to do to get those shots in. Which makes it fantastic, not to mention going up very close on corners and stuff and being able to just pop it from here. You don't have to worry about the stock or anything bumping into the back end of the door, getting those tiny little quick shots for extreme CQB, of course. So, absolutely fantastic gun for that. You're going to have, of course, the lower power and incredibly short barrel here. You're going to have very little in the form of accuracy for the most part, but full out of give of a spray and, uh, there's always the potential to polar star things like this. Just something to keep up there. Now the battery and everything, this is basically my backup AEG at the moment because if polar star runs out of gas when shotgun's just very big and out of the way, it's easy to carry a few extra mags for this. And I have a ton of MP5 mags already. But what you can do is to put the battery in. It's a bit of a massive pain actually. You open the stock up. So I guess I might as well teach you about the actual gun instead of just telling you about the real steel version. Pop these pins out, pop that one out, and pop this one out. And you can change out the stock too with any other Tokyo Motori MP5 stock. That comes out, you can put the basic base blade in there or whatever. You got your wires running around here. If we had a full stock, we could just run the battery up through here, but eh. As you can see, let me put these down here real quick. With the port there, doing the HK slap and everything that everyone loves. The main reason they don't make it, actually. You've also got the dummy uh, ejection port cover here. Reason being because the battery, an AK stick type, basically sits up in this entire top portion. And you can also put the little rails on here if you want a red dot sight to make it even better, but less concealability for actually better use, I'd say. But yeah, cool stuff you can do. Now for the the battery sits up here, or the battery, yeah, the battery connects up in the front, so you push this pin down, it's kind of a massive pain, and then you can even take this off. This slides forward, yep, like so. Here's your battery connector. So what you would do, what is that? Is that, that pushes open, that pushes out, huh? See, that's mostly going to be for retracting your battery, so. Let me see if I got a battery. I don't want to stick anything in here. I think this one's too big. This one's also got a faulty wire I need to deal with. I think this one will actually slide, kind of. Yeah, getting a battery to fit is your big problem here. I'm gonna need to go get a smaller battery for one out of the P-Star. But basically, when the battery's through, you put that little piece through there and then you connect these like so. You go cut chunk Now this is just the standard MP5. Okay, it's not the high cycle. The high cycle is designed to shoot really fast and break really fast as a result. So there's two clicks. Uh, I guess there's only one right now. There's usually, yeah, there's like a little two click method to get into semi, which will shoot like this. Not bad, a little loud, sounds pretty good for an AEG and then full auto. So the rate of fire on this one with this tiny battery, well, decent sized battery is closer to this. So pretty basic. Definitely not the speed of a real MP5K, but again, Polar Star can fix these issues. So, as you can see, you got a very minimalistic thing. You can actually buy the flat base plate for the more concealable version, like I was mentioning. And you can probably even get a little railed front grip here if you so desire, which would actually be pretty cool if they had one without the vertical grip. 
in my opinion. I think it would be a bit easier to hold this way, although it's such a small gun, the vertical grip's not a big issue. But yeah, getting a little something, something, something going. So ultimately, you've got a very cool, very small, very simple gun. Actually, you know, I could probably even rewire this off to the side and just tape a battery here, because I really don't care, as long as the battery doesn't get wet or damaged. But yeah, cool little gun. It will run SEMA mags to an extent. They don't fit as well as the Tokyo Marui ones, but at the same time, they're not expensive mags, so... And you got this nice little gearbox in here. I haven't bothered really figuring out just how to take this apart entirely yet. I don't want to do any more tech work on it than I have to, but I'm sure the time will come, so... Backup AG, simple, basic, to the point, and gives me a nice alternative to more larger traditional guns or handgun gas blowbacks. So, how much help are we at? 10 minutes? So yeah, basically, I really like sub guns, particularly Airsoft and Okinawa, where you're going to be fighting close quarters almost all the time anyway, so... This makes a really good all-around gun. This is definitely a flanking, run-up, get support fire from your machine guns. I know, some people who really want to just run machine guns all the time. But, you know, they like to say, oh, no full auto. I think full auto with machine guns, particularly if they're going to be heavier machine guns, would be my contingent. You know, people who carry very light machine guns with polar stars and just do full auto and it's basically speed soft at that point. And speed soft... Um, I'll define it in guttural noises for that. But yeah, so this is nice. Small, you can get support from an M4 for actually picking off targets at a decent distance and also gives you the compactability to shoot within closer quarters with a backup handgun. Shotgun, ironically, best for range because the spread's good to compensate any inaccuracies. You can fire six BBs in one shot. It gives you a good range sort of setup there, interestingly enough. And this, with handguns, is going to be so simple to maneuver and run with and do everything that you can come up behind the bunker and just pop, 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 pop. Pop, pop, pop. Someone's on the side. Pop, pop, pop. Pop, 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 pop. Pop, 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 pop. Very fast-paced close quarters gun, which I think is mostly what a juice box is gonna is doing with his really short M4 I got for him. So, some cool stuff. So, depending on what your play style is, it's nice to have alternatives. I would like to get a machine gun here at some point. Actually, I think one of my buddies is going to be getting me uh, parts for one in the near future so I can have an obnoxiously cool looking machine gun, which would be great because I like, well, main effort, flanking effort, and support weapons. All have their own purposes to fill, and being able to alternate between them and not playing the same style all the time every day, it, it's good to have options. And there's a lot of right ways to do things, and also a lot of wrong ways, so. Huh. Yeah, it is just the gearbox and then like a little piece of a uh, material metal up here, so. Cool stuff, all together. Putting this back together is kind of a pain. So once you get your battery installed, just slide this back over here. Make sure that's in a nice, safe place. There's only a little bit of wobble to the front grip here, but it's not gonna be enough to break anything. Also, you got this little pin piece you push down here before you put the uh, thing in. So if you got a sling on it, it's not gonna just pop out against your will and cause you all manner of problems. That little retaining pin does work pretty well. Let me see if I can get back in here with relative effort. <sighs> so yeah, like I said, it's not the easiest thing to put back together. But you can also, like I said, this is all on a 14mm uh, threaded barrel, so any of the aftermarket parts you want to put on there, like a sound hog, or fire hog, or whatever they call them these days. Pretty nice thing. I'd say if you want to make it louder, you can put suppressors on here. I saw one guy he bought an MP5K like this, and he put this massively long inner barrel in it, so... Again, why get a subgun if you're gonna have a barrel like this long? Massive suppressor over the top of it. And, uh, yeah, there's really no point in it being a subgun at that point anymore now, is there? I mean, kinda cool, but... To each their own, I guess? Pins back in place. But yeah, once you got the battery in there, it's kind of a pain. You can disconnect. I'd leave the battery in there. All honesty, once I had that in, I would only remove the front piece here to plug it in or unplug it. But again, if you P-Star it, you got plenty of room for a battery and you can run your little tank. So again, fantastic little gun, especially if you're using gas mask. Old school gas mask like the uh, one I have. 
it's nice if you're not gonna be able to look down the sides or anything with the gas mask because of filters and everything just the material of the mask again one point sling push it out you get your uh sights available because you have nothing in the way so also great for gas masks so as you can see definitely a historically significant gun now we have mp7s tmps or i guess the mp9 as they call it now and all that fun stuff but this is a classic original and i absolutely love my sub guns again because i mean look at this it's so small you can do like some weird some weird warhammer 40k vampire crossbows the emperor protects if you say corpse emperor then we uh, we're gonna have problems so fantastic gun you can throw it on your shoulder and look a complete ass <laughs> but i i absolutely love these things so again i really I don't know what else I'm going to tell you. It's got the three point. So it actually comes, the thread comes with a little thread cover and then you got the little quick detach attachments on it. So if you want to run, you got your three point prong series. If you want to run a little quick detach suppressor or something. But what's cool, what I particularly like about these 14 millimeter threads, like, um, oh, yours is going to be stuck on there. Is that it? All right, so it wants to play games here. So we're not going to play with this right now. But at some point, I'll take it back off. I'll use a wrench and some towels and stuff. We'll take this off. What I love about weapons, particularly from Tokyo Motori and stuff, anything with a 14 millimeter thread, is that you can put tracer units on it. So we can go get a little Tokyo Motori tracer like this big. I've been debating buying one at like 60 bucks. That'd be great for night games, but cameras don't pick up that much at night anyway. So it'd be mostly something for me to play around with, not so much share on the YouTubes. We put a little tracer unit on this and a red dot sight, and you've got a fantastic little beast. Although everyone's gonna start shooting at you when you do it, but eh. You can do them in day games too, they're pretty bright, depending on the BBs and stuff you buy. And yeah, this, if you're wondering how this works, this is all just on a spring here, so you just push up on it before you move it in whatever direction you want to go. God, this thing just feels amazing in the hands, by the way. It's that German witchcraft. Which, I mean, once you have a country making guns like this post-Nazi Germany time frame, it's, it's pretty understandable why everyone's going to be like, ah, the Nazis are probably involved in the occult, because you need witchcraft to build this. That's another thing. I'm sure some scientists sold a, sold a saint to, Satan or some shit to make this stuff work out. So that's basically my video. I will absolutely be running this in the future. Fear not. I've got um, the Universal Tactical Taylor mag pouches. Two of them on a little HSGI newer leg panel with a laser cut. I can basically fit six mags in there. It's the long mags. It's going to be pretty obnoxious because I'm not going to use more than maybe one or two per game anyway. So unless we're doing full auto, then we'll see what happens. But I'll probably carry this as my backup. And since it's not always easy to get air for the uh, P-Star, and I haven't played in like almost four months now anyway, this will be a nice little gun to run on the side and... Do a few games with, run a lot, uh, run up alongside uh, Juice Box and do a lot more of the CQB work than just fighting, giving, well, giving Juice Box cover so they can work. But we'll see what happens with machine guns and stuff in the near future. Trying to get a tournament game together and we'll see what happens. So, again, absolutely amazing gun. This is a classic that will probably continue for many, many years, I hope. Until they build something better. So, cheers, everyone. I mean, they did come up with the, uh, which time we got? A few minutes. They did come out with the um, Chris Vector, and they did it in 45. And 45 doesn't have significantly different wound ballistics or effectivity over 9mm, but I'm pretty sure they did the Chris Vector thing with 45 because the almost untamable kick with the little reduction did fantastic. You can carry more rounds with 9mm, and it's still got an insane rate of fire the way. So it's the Chris Vector tamed the 45, which makes it way better than the Yump, in my opinion. But we're coming up with 20 minutes. I'm going to stop rambling. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Got a little birdcage on there. Got that from uh, my buddy Tesla before I swapped it out with the uh, Firehawk. So we'll see what happens. Cheers, everyone. Stay chivalrous. And um, yeah, I mean, as long as I'm not actually playing just here making these vlogs, this, I'm going to be wearing this shirt a lot. I'm trying to get up maybe tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Cheers, everyone. See ya.